Well, it's official. Donald Trump is now the third president in U.S. history to be impeached, the other two being Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton. Remember that Richard Nixon resigned before he could be impeached. Now, prior to the impeachment vote, there were protests across the country with thousands of people in cities across the country basically speaking out in favor of impeachment and calling on Congress to do the right thing. Now, when it comes to the actual impeachment vote, there were two separate votes, one for each article of impeachment. The first was abuse of power, and all but two Democrats voted for this. And then the second was obstruction of Congress, and all but three Democrats voted for this. Now, the only independent to vote for this is Republican-turned-independent Justin Amash. He voted yes on both articles of impeachment. And then when it comes to Republicans, zero Republicans voted to impeach. So now this will move to the Senate, presumably in January, where we will see a trial take place and the Senate will ultimately vote to um, either exonerate him or convict him and remove him. Now, unlike impeachment, which requires just a simple majority, this requires two thirds of the Senate to vote to impeach. So he will almost certainly not be convicted in the Senate. And I honestly doubt that we're going to get even a single Republican vote. I'll be shocked, honestly, if we get all Democrats in the Senate to vote for impeachment, because I'm not so convinced that individuals like Joe Manchin will vote to um, impeach Donald Trump. So with that being said, you know, this impeachment vote needed to happen. Although I will say this, it is frustrating because the way that Democrats handled this predictably wasn't the best, right? They're largely giving him a pass for a lot of other things that he should be impeached for that I think would have actually made a more powerful case. So um, just to name a few, the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels, uh, financial crimes, violating the emoluments clause, war crimes, human rights abuses at the border with his zero tolerance family separation policy. Democrats chose to focus really narrowly on this Ukraine issue, and I understand the logic strategically because they want to make sure that they narrow the scope of impeachment so that way the American people are able to grasp it. But the problem with that strategy is that ultimately it's not going to convince as many people as you're hoping because it just allows Donald Trump to really focus his efforts on debunking anything that you say, any evidence that comes out well, he can just say, no, that's not true. Here's reasons X, Y, and Z. Now, if you were to get him on all the uh, you know, the reasons why he should be impeached, right? The emoluments clause, war crimes, all of that, then it would be a lot more difficult. It's more scattershot. So he can't possibly wiggle his way out of all of that, right? And convince people that he's not guilty of all of those crimes because there's so many different things that he needs to defend. Whereas with this, you know, Ukraine scandal, sure, it's an abuse of power, but it just gives him one thing to focus on. So this was mishandled, absolutely. And I don't think Nancy Pelosi even believes in impeachment. Because remember, we've been pushing her to impeach. House Democrats have been pushing her to impeach because this president has been in violation of the Constitution. Since the day he was sworn in, he was in violation of the Emoluments Clause. So Nancy Pelosi probably only begrudgingly pursued impeachment. So, you know, she would get progressives off of her back. With that being said, though, you know, she did it. She checked the box and she kind of did a shitty job. I'm not going to lie. Not very happy with Nancy Pelosi, but I suspected that in the event they ever did pursue impeachment, this is what would happen. Nancy Pelosi wouldn't really do the best job. With that being said, I still am glad that Donald Trump was impeached and he needs to be held accountable because even if the Ukraine phone call is maybe the lesser of all of his crimes, it still is an abuse of power unquestionably. But in a way, to not pursue him for other reasons, which are all impeachable in my opinion, you know, in a way, Democrats are still giving him a pass even if they impeached him. Now, what's infuriating is that they only really chose to pursue impeachment because he used his position of power to get dirt on Joe Biden, who is someone that the establishment loves. So the way that, you know, the public might see this is, hey, you know, they don't really care about impeachment. They're just pursuing impeachment now because Donald Trump wants dirt on one of their own. That's that's the uh, the way that people see it. And I think correctly so. Um, however, credit where it's due, the fact that impeachment happened is important. It's just that we'd have a more powerful ca case going into the Senate if it were handled more appropriately. Now, in the event, Democrats took my advice and they 
you know, introduced, let's say, five to ten articles of impeachment, which they could if they wanted to get him for everything. Do I think that that would lead to him ultimately being convicted and removed? I don't. Because that would assume that I believe Republicans would do the right thing. And they are not going to do the right thing. I have no faith in them, and I have almost no faith in Democrats as well. The only way that we'd get two-thirds of the Senate to vote to convict is if something crazy happened and Republican senators feel vulnerable that if they voted, you know, to not convict Trump, they would lose their seats, something like that, right? But I highly doubt that type of situation will happen. And even if that situation did happen, I still don't know that Republicans would be principled because they're not principled. They do what is politically expedient and they are all about team politics. Democrats are the same. So I don't suspect this to go anywhere in the Senate. Um, I think this is where it will die in the Senate. Nonetheless, Trump is still impeached and this really is historic. Only three presidents in American history have been impeached and Donald Trump is one of them. Rightfully so. Now, he should have been impeached for more. That being said, he's still impeached. Accountability is really important. I think Democrats are right to hold Trump accountable. I think they undermined their own effort, especially Nancy Pelosi, who chose not to pursue impeachment against George W. Bush, which obviously is a war criminal, so he should have been impeached. Um, so, you know, there's a lot that I can critique with the way that this was handled. With that being said, it ends in Trump's impeachment and will likely end in the Senate, where he will not be removed. I think that that is the conclusion that everyone sees. Now, whether or not this affects him or the 2020 race at all, I don't necessarily know that that will be the case. I don't know that this will hurt him going into 2020. I also don't necessarily know that this will help him going into 2020. I think that the impact on the election won't necessarily be that large either way, but I think that the process itself matters because, you know, this is about principle. It's about holding people in power accountable. So, uh, we impeach the motherfucker, and I think that, uh, that's it. Good on Democrats for fighting. Um, you know, really, I think credit is owed to people like AOC and Rashida Tlaib, who have been pushing Democrats to actually impeach. Um, but here we are. I think I'm just gonna start rambling if I continue talking about this, because there's a thousand things to say about it. Long story short, Trump has been impeached. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.